Since 2012, over 600 bowling centers in the United States have shut down. There are less and less PBA tournaments each year, and in an effort at self-preservation, the USBC has recently certified string pins for competitive play. To anyone watching, it's obvious that bowling is in a downward spiral. If bowling is to survive, these trends need to reverse, and I have a plan. But before I tell you my plan to save bowling, I need you to understand what I mean by saving bowling. The big thing is I want to see a PBA tour that is actually worth bowling. I want to see more money in the sport. When I was a kid, I had dreams of going pro, and I probably could have. I bowled every single day for years. But when I turned 18, I had to make a choice. I needed to make money to survive, pay the bills, pay for food. And I looked at the PBA tour salaries, and you have to be the best in the entire world to make a couple hundred thousand dollars. If you have a bad year, you can't pay rent. So looking at the 2023 PBA tour salaries, uh, let's look at the bowling YouTubers. Packy had a pretty good year in 2023. He made $98,000. That's pretty decent. But as we go down the list, Darren Tang is a phenomenal bowler. He used to kick my butt all the time in the youth tournaments. That guy can play. And his 2023 season amounted to $22,000. Are you serious? What even is that? That's crazy. That's not even accounting for the travel expenses, the hotels, the flight. $22,000. Brad Miller is another amazing bowler and YouTuber. And in 2023, he earned a total of $1,850. Is that even a typo? How do you survive on that? Like, I get they have sponsorships. I get they have the YouTube and their school and whatnot. But $1,850. That guy is amazingly good. And that's his tour earnings for 2023? That's ridiculous. It doesn't make sense as a career path. Then you look across at other sports. Soccer, golf, baseball, football. These athletes are earning millions on millions and millions of dollars. It's crazy. It's totally weird to me, too, because I think bowling is one of the most fun sports there are. I've played basically all of them, and there's no money in bowling. There's no reason to pursue, there's no reason to pursue a career in professional bowling. So when I say I want to save bowling, I want to see a more thriving professional tour. When I see the USB certifying string pins, it just screams to me it's the wrong decision. If we end up in a world where bowling is bowled completely on string pins and a PBA title is decided by a string that knocked over another pin, that's the dumbest title of all time. USBC rules if a string takes out another pin, that's a, that counts as a spare. So let's say Belmonte versus Tackett is in the finals of the US Open. Belmonte leaves a two weight in the 10th and he needs a spare to win the tournament. He hits the two light, the two wraps around the eight and the string takes out the eight pin. Technically, Belmonte wins, but that's the dumbest thing I've ever seen. I think if strings ultimately become the norm, bowling loses all chance of ever becoming respected as a sport and ever getting any money into it. To me, the only way to save bowling is to get more people involved in the sport. And I have a plan. And I know what you're thinking. What does this guy possibly know about getting more people involved in bowling? Well, if you're watching this video, it's already working. We are currently in stage one of a four-stage plan. Alright, just give me five minutes to explain my plan, and at the end you can tell me if I'm crazy or what. But, we currently live in a pretty unique time in human history where Basically, the entire world is connected via the internet. The most random videos go viral and reach millions upon millions of people. My buddy Chris, thereGo.c, recently posted a TikTok, which got tens of millions of views, got reposted by ESPN, SportsCenter, House of Highlights, all the big sports content pages, and that reached ultimately hundreds of millions of people. That's insane. And I think this is the key to growing the sport in 2024. I don't know if the other bowling YouTubers realize this, but I think that they are doing more for the sport than anyone has done for it in a long time. I've received hundreds of messages from people telling me they found my videos, they got into bowling because of me, they fell in love with the sport because of me. Just my videos alone, that's insane. You might have noticed that I do things a little bit differently. 
I basically try to do wacky concepts that get people outside of bowling to watch the video. Like, what is this guy doing? But then I try to make a fun video too that makes people go, oh, bowling looks fun. I want to go do that. That's basically the entire concept behind my channel. I'm trying to reach as many people as possible and make the game look fun. If you don't have a YouTube account, please make one, subscribe. Subscribe to all the bowling channels out there. Help the sport because I think as bowling YouTube grows, more people will notice. They'll take notice of bowling, the sport, and get involved in it. As more and more bowling YouTubers grow, I think the rest of the world will begin to notice and possibly even take up an interest in bowling. The way the internet currently works, and social media particularly, is they'll group different kinds of content into little bubbles called a niche. So you have the bowling niche, you have like a gardening niche, for example. You have a fitness niche, which is pretty big. There's like 60 million people in that one. And there's a general entertainment niche, which basically encompasses the entire world. So when a video is really fun and interesting, it might reach tens to 60 millions of people. For example, look at Mr. Beast. His content is general entertainment, and he has, what, 200 million subscribers? He's reaching basically the entire world. So we're in this little bowling niche, and my content is aimed at breaking out of this bowling niche into the general entertainment. We've had a few pretty key instances of this already. Brad and Kyle did a collaboration with uh, Cody and Noel, and they have 1.2 million subs on their channel. Missy Parkin did a collaboration with the Try Guys, and they have 8 million subs. I think these two key instances are huge for the sport. I don't know if they realize that, but they've reached so many people that wouldn't otherwise watch a bowling video. Quick edit, I forgot a third key instance. Jason Belmonte, dude perfect. They reached over 100 million people. That's a lot of people. I think we need to see more of this, of the bowlers being ambassadors for the sport, making videos with other kinds of content creators, and making the sport more exposed to the world. This is my plan as well. As my account gets bigger, other content creators will take notice and they'll want to collaborate. I think one area that I can break into that most other bowlers can't is the fitness niche. Fitness has been a huge part of my life. I love getting stronger. I love developing my character. I love bringing other people on that journey. And as you can see, I've made a few other videos about this. And I've just finished writing my second book, which is totally free if you want to check that out. I have two books, Bodybuilding for Noobs and Bodybuilding Cheat Codes. One teaches you how to eat whatever you want. Well, not whatever you want, but how to eat your favorite foods and make them healthy in a way that'll help you with your fitness goals. The second book teaches you how to work out each part of your body and build your character. So if you're interested in learning about that, check out my free books on 220avg.com. Highly recommend, good information. Eventually, I do plan on trying out different kinds of content, especially this fitness type of content. And I think that's ultimately key to reaching more people and getting them involved into the sport. We need bowlers breaking out of the bowling niche and trying to do more things. We need to get exposed to different communities. So when you guys see us out there trying out different things, please support us, please watch our videos, please. It goes a long way for the sport as an entirety. And I think that's ultimately the key to growing the sport. I've seen a lot of comments saying that string pins are the future of the sport and I should just get used to it. No. If we end up in some crazy dystopian future where string pins are in every bowling center in the world, I'm going to have my own bowling center. We're going to have blackjack and free fall pin centers the way I want it. And if you ever left a comment like that on any bowling video ever, you are permanently banned from ever stepping foot in my establishment. String pin haters only. <laughs> <laughs> My realistic time frame for this is five to 10 years. Uh, realistically, it could happen sooner depending on how things go, but let's keep it realistic, five to 10 years. As the trend of bowling centers is going down, the only way to fight that is to build more bowling centers. So I wanna do my part, I wanna build my own bowling center, and maybe as time goes on, we can build a chain of bowling centers and have five, 10, 100 bowling centers out there. Who knows where this will end up in the future, but this is stage three, building my own bowling center. Taylor Swift is not my type, but I'll take one for the team. Taylor Swift started dating Travis Kelsey, and when that happened, 
Travis Kelsey jersey sales shot up 400%. The Kansas City Chiefs have also mentioned that a brand new audience is watching their games. That's insane. Just one person dating a player on a football team is bringing a whole new audience to watch their football games. We need something similar like this to happen for bowling. Obviously, dating Taylor Swift is somewhat of a joke, but if something similar like that happened to bowling, it would send shockwaves through the bowling community. I don't actually want to date Taylor, but if it came down to it and she was interested, I would do it for the sport. I would do it for you guys. <laughs> but yeah, that's basically my plan. Maybe I'm crazy, maybe it won't work. I feel like we're in a race against the USBC and Bolero trying to kill the sport. But I've already received hundreds of messages from people saying that they got into the sport because of my videos and that's amazing. I think if we keep going at this pace, we could bring in thousands of people, tens of thousands of people, and that would be huge. The sport of bowling has done so much for my life, and when I was younger, I would always hear the old timers saying that they were giving back to the sport, and I didn't really understand it, but now as I'm getting older, I actually do, and I, I think this is my way of giving back to the sport, in a weird 2024 internet era way. Making these fun videos and getting more people involved in the sport is basically my way of giving back. And until someone comes up with a better idea, I think this is the best plan in this age and era to grow the sport. So, so a big thank you to everyone who's supporting the channel on the Patreon, the YouTube memberships, or even just subscribing. It all helps out a lot. If you don't have a YouTube account yet, please make one. Subscribe. Subscribe to all the bowling channels out there. Help all of us, because as bowling YouTube gets bigger, everyone else is going to notice. The rest of the world is going to notice. For now, the plan is to continue with the fun, wacky bowling videos that are fun to watch and will bring in more people. And as my channel gets bigger, I'll start trying to delve into other communities. So when I start doing that, please support the channel. Please just watch, you know, drop a like. And to anyone else who's doing the same thing, support them as well, please. I think this is the way to save the sport. I think this is the way to actually grow it. Hopefully in five to 10 years, we can look back on this video and see a lot of progress within the sport. And there's really not much else I'd rather be doing with my life. So thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next one.